Today, I'm talking about the first book in the Chaos Walking trilogy by Patrick Ness and the 2021 movie adaptation starring Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley. Hey there, I'm Jessica, and this is Bookshelf to Big Screen. If you're new to the channel, I take a look at books that have been adapted to the big or small screen and tell you what changed. So if you've only watched the movie and don't want to look like a fool at book club, be sure to subscribe. The story follows Todd, who lives on a planet where men can hear each other's thoughts, and Viola, who crash lands on that planet. Todd believed that all the women on his planet were killed by the native species of that planet, but eventually discovers a more sinister truth and he must protect Viola at all costs. Together, they race across the planet trying to outrun the bad guys and make it to safety. Real quick, if you want to avoid any spoilers, sections with spoilers are marked in the description below, so you can skip past them and just watch the spoiler-free bits. The settlers of this new planet are people who left Earth because it was overcrowded and had few resources left. They were mostly religious people who were searching for a simpler way of life. And once they arrived at the new planet, they abandoned most of their technology. We can clearly see this throughout the movie. Everyone on this new planet can hear a man's thoughts, which they call noise, but there is also a kind of visual representation that is projected. And I think the movie did a pretty good job showing us what this might have looked like. Women, for whatever reason, are immune to this and their thoughts are still private, which causes some problems in some of the new settlements. Todd's mom died while he was just a baby and he was raised by friends of hers, Ben and Killian. I want to briefly talk about this because it was kind of interesting. Later in the book and in the series, there are some very old-fashioned ideas on roles of men and women in society, so it was kind of surprising to have an openly gay couple accepted in the community. The book didn't specifically say that they were gay, but I felt it was pretty clear. A quick search informed me that Patrick Ness himself identifies as queer, so it was kind of cool that the couple he chose to include for a little bit of representation also happen to be the only good people in what turns out to be a town full of really terrible people. Viola is a part of the next wave of settlers and she has been sent ahead as a scout to determine if they will land on the planet or not. The native species on this planet are called the Spackle. The settlers had a war with the Spackle before Todd was born. He's been told that the Spackle did something to them and that's why the men have noise and also that the Spackle killed all the women. Todd has an awesome little dog named Manchi who goes on this adventure with him and eventually saves his life. Todd lives in a settlement called Prentice Town, and his whole life he has believed that they are the only people on the New World. Until he finally has to leave Prentice Town, and he discovers there are many more people living on the planet. In the movie, we see how Todd lives and more of the townspeople before Viola's shuttle has even crashed. Later, Viola sneaks into Todd's barn and steals some stuff and he chases after her. This is when he finds the crash site. Todd immediately runs off to tell the mayor, thinking of the spaceship while he's going through town. Todd thinks it was a man, but when he tells the mayor he didn't have any noise, the mayor tells everyone to find her. They catch her, but she manages to escape and hides in Todd's barn. She steals a motorcycle to escape again, and Ben and Killian send Todd on a horse after her to help her. In the book, Todd is out in the swamp on his way to get apples for Ben. Viola is already on the planet. He doesn't see Viola right away, but he sees and hears the absence of noise. 
there's a quiet spot and he thinks it's a spackle. He goes through town thinking about the quiet and this alerts the townspeople that there's a female nearby. When Ben and Killian find out what Todd has experienced, this is when they send him away on his own and Todd is running for the rest of the book. When he goes back through the swamp, he finally sees Viola, but he's going to leave her there until Aaron, the town preacher, attacks her. And then Todd decides to save her. And from that point on, the two of them are together. In the book, Todd is anxiously awaiting his 13th birthday because this is when he is deemed a man in his community. He's just a few days away from his birthday when Viola, who is around the same age, arrives on the planet. What's interesting in the book is that Todd is so hung up on this arbitrary number determining his manhood that Viola becomes so frustrated with him she points out that the years on this new planet are longer than Earth's and on Earth he'd already be 14. In the movie, they're both older. Todd is waiting on his 18th birthday to become a man. I think there's probably a few reasons for this. Obviously, it'd be a lot harder to believe that actors who are in their late 20s are a couple of tweens, but I also think the things these kids have to deal with are kind of heavy for 12-year-olds, so I'm okay with them being a little older. But really, I think some studio execs were just like, we need this shot of Tom Holland's ass. In the movie, Viola is on the shuttle with a few other crew members who are all killed when the shuttle crashes. Later, she tells Todd that her parents got sick and died on the spaceship. In the book, Viola's parents are one of the few caretakers who run the ship while the other passengers are in their extended sleep state. Her family was chosen to take the shuttle ahead and scout the planet for other settlements or a good landing location. So her parents are actually the ones that die in the crash. And Viola has to bury them in the swamp. In the movie, we see the mayor early on. Todd likes him and he's eager to get his praise. The mayor even gives Todd a knife as a birthday present when he's a child. He seems like a good guy, but Ben and Killian dislike that Todd likes him. While Viola is trying to escape, she overhears the mayor telling Aaron that he wants to ambush her spaceship because if he takes control of the ship, he can then take control of the entire planet. And as the movie progresses, he just gets meaner. In the book, the mayor is scary from the beginning. Todd avoids him and rarely sees him. The knife, as in the title of the book, was actually Ben's knife, which Todd was hoping to get as a present for his 13th birthday. But Ben gives it to him to protect himself when he sends him out on his own. The mayor is only in the book as the person leading the chase after Todd and Viola, and Todd is never friendly with the mayor. He doesn't even have any dialogue until the very end of the book. However, in the second book, there are times when the mayor is nice and has more of a relationship with Todd, but it's only so that he can get what he wants. In the movie, Ben and Killian show Todd a map and tell him he's got to take Viola to Far Branch. Just before he dies, Killian's noise tips off the mayor when he thinks that the people of Far Branch are going to kill Todd. When Viola and Todd get to Far Branch, they come across a man and a young girl who takes them to the mayor, who Todd is surprised to see is a woman named Hildy. She lets them stay with her and she tells them that there's a way to contact Viola's ship in another town called Haven. The men of Prentice Town arrive and the mayor tells Hildy that he's there for Viola. He tells the townspeople that she's a spy and tells them to join him. One man is convinced and tries to turn over Viola, but she fights him off. Many others just give up. They have Todd and Viola cornered and the mayor tells Ben, to go in and bring him Viola, and he'll spare Todd. Ben is able to project an image of Viola, fooling the mayor and giving Todd and Viola a chance to escape. In the book, when Ben sends Todd away, 
he shows him the book and he tells him it was his mother, saying that it will explain everything. He says there's a map inside, but tells him not to look at it until he's out of the swamp because he doesn't want Todd's noise to give him away to anyone who might hear him. So not even Todd knows that he's going to Far Branch. It takes them several action-packed days to get to the other town, including a nail-biting escape from the mayor and his crew when they manage to blow up a bridge, making it impossible for the mayor to follow them directly and bind themselves a little time. Just outside of town, they come across Hildy, who was the former mayor of Far Branch. They stay the night with Hildy and her husband, and then she takes them into town to meet the new mayor, who is Hildy's sister. The townspeople have a meeting to decide what to do about Viola and Todd, and this is when Prentice Town attacks. Todd and Viola get away, and there's never a confrontation with the mayor here, but many people from Far Branch do decide to join the mayor. In the movie, a Far Branch man named Matthew threatens Todd, telling him that men from Prentice Town are to be hanged, but Hildy says that only applies to men and Todd is still a boy. And she reminds Matthew that he was once from Prentice Town too. Later, when the mayor arrives, Matthew tries to shoot him, but gets himself killed instead. In the book, Matthew does confront Todd when he first gets to town, and Hildy does intervene. But later, when the whole town is at the meeting and Todd is working alone in a barn, Matthew comes back to kill Todd. Todd tries to run, but Manchi goes after Matthew in order to save Todd's life, so Todd goes back to save Manchi. They fight, and Todd manages to trap him under big rolls of silage. Then the town is under attack from Prentice Town, and Todd and Biola are on the run again, headed towards the town of Haven. In the movie, Todd kills a creature in the river for food and has a small supply of apples in his bag. In the book, they mostly eat food that Viola had in her bag from the ship. Todd is not some amazing hunter, and when he has to go through the swamp to leave Prentice Town, he has to fight a croc, but it's only because it attacked him and he's just trying to survive. In the movie, Todd is surprised to find the journal in his bag after he's left home. While they're in Far Branch, he lets Viola read it to him after admitting that he can't read himself. The journal is a series of letters to Todd, telling him how Mayor Prentice got them to make their settlement on the other side of the swamp, far away from all the other settlements, and how the men started breaking down and resenting women. There was a curfew for women, and the preacher started saying that women didn't have noise because they had no souls. It isn't in the journal, but Todd comes to the conclusion that the men killed the women and told the lie that it was the spackle. In the book, again, Todd knows he has his mother's book from the moment Ben sends him off on his own. But the problem is, he can't read it, and he's too stubborn to let Viola read it to him. So they go on the run from town to town, not knowing what she wrote until the very end. The night before they reach Haven, Todd finally lets Viola read it to him. And it's pretty similar to what she reads in the movie, except there's a lot more that they don't read. In the movie, Viola says that's all there is. But in the book, Todd has just heard enough and isn't emotionally prepared to hear more. Also, he doesn't figure out the truth of his town's history just from reading his mother's journal. Ben is actually the one who finally tells him what happened when they see him one last time near the end of the book. He says the spackle didn't infect them with noise, but they blamed them, so they went to war. And when they were done killing spackle, most of the men decided that they didn't like it that women had no noise, so they killed them too. He says that the mayor was waiting for Todd, the last boy, to become a man because in Prentice Town, on their 13th birthday, boys are told a version of the truth and then made complicit by having to kill another man. And Todd, being the last innocent boy in Prentice Town, 
was symbolic for completing the mayor's army. In the movie, our introduction of Aaron is right at the beginning, when he hits Todd as some sort of religious judgment. Later, we see him disagreeing with the mayor. Aaron thinks Viola is an angel or a martyr, but the mayor just wants to ambush her ship. After they escape from Far Branch, Aaron catches up to Todd and Viola and attacks them on the river. Todd manages to save Viola, but Aaron catches Manchi and kills him. His final appearance is when Viola is trying to send a message to her ship. He wants Viola to kill him for his part in killing the women of Prentice Town. She manages to use her little firebox to set him on fire, and then he just walks off to die. In the book, this is the evil dude that just will not die. He's terrible from the beginning, hitting Todd for basically no reason. Later, when Todd is leaving Prentice Town through the swamp, he runs into Aaron again, who beats him up, but a crocodile attacks him and Todd is able to get away, leaving Aaron for dead. And this is when he first sees Viola, but she's afraid and unwilling to go with him, and so Aaron, who did not die from the croc attack, grabs her and takes her off to make her a sacrifice. Todd fights him and manages to hit him in the head with a rock, but he can't bring himself to kill him. Todd leaves him lying face down in the water, thinking he'll die. But he doesn't. And a few days later, Todd and Viola see this bastard leading the mayor and his crew after them to Far Branch. Way later, after Far Branch and a few more towns, Todd has a fight with a spackle, which we'll talk more about in a bit. And Aaron gets the jump on him, stabs him in the back, knocks Viola out with chloroform or something, and takes her off into the woods. Todd nearly dies, but rallies with the help of Manchi and tracks Viola down. This is when they have the confrontation with Aaron on the river, but it's way different because Todd is nearly dead. So when he frees Viola, she has to practically drag him into the boat, but Aaron catches him and starts to pull him out. And that's when Manchi jumps off the boat to attack Aaron and save Todd. Aaron gives him the choice, the dog or the girl, and Todd has to make the heartbreaking choice to leave Manchi and watch Aaron break his neck. Todd and Viola have their last showdown with Aaron right before they reach Haven. This is when Aaron confesses that he was supposed to be the sacrifice for Todd to kill to become a man, and he still wants Todd to kill him. Todd is ready to kill him in order to save Viola, but Viola is actually the one who kills Aaron and allows Todd to keep his innocence intact, which is pretty important in the second book. In the movie, Todd leaves without Manchi, but the dog tracks them and meets up with them later. In the book, Todd is never without Manchi, and... Todd can hear Manchi's thoughts. In fact, all the animals have noise. I have to admit, when I first started reading, I thought having Manchi talk was kind of dumb. But then, you get super attached to this dog. He saves Todd's life on more than one occasion, and in the end, sacrifices himself to save Todd one last time. It's heartbreaking. The same scene in the movie was sad, but it really did not have the same impact. In the movie, Todd and Viola come across the Spackle Village on their way to Far Branch. Todd tries to take them around it, but one finds them and drags Todd away. It fights Todd, but stops when it sees Viola. Todd takes the opportunity to attack, stabbing it repeatedly. Viola shouts at him to stop, and the Spackle just walks away. In the book, they don't see the spackle until way after Far Branch, and it's all alone. There isn't a village or anything like that. It's minding its own business at its campfire when they come up on it. 
Todd immediately attacks it, thinking it will kill them, because at this point he still believes the spackle killed his mother. Todd does kill the spackle, even though Viola tries to stop him. In the movie, right at the beginning, we see that Davy and Todd don't really get along, and Todd uses his noise to create a snake and scare Davy's horse. Davy seems to be jealous of the attention that his dad, the mayor, gives to Todd. In the end, when the ship arrives, Davy runs off with the other men from Prentice Town. In the book, Davy is just a little older than Todd, so they were actually friends until Davy had his 13th birthday and became a man. Throughout the whole book, while Todd and Viola are on the run, Davy rides on his own ahead of the Prentice Town men and catches up to them a few times. The very last time, just before they reach Haven, Todd does the snake trick, and Davy falls from his horse, but gets caught in the stirrup and the horse drags him off. What's interesting is that the whole jealousy bit with the mayor liking Todd more actually happens in the second book. In the movie, we see Ben while the mayor chases Todd and Viola and again when he helps them escape in Far Branch. And finally, at the end, when the mayor uses him to draw Todd out and try to get him to give up Viola. When Todd won't tell him where Viola is, the mayor shoots Ben and Ben passes Todd a knife. Todd attacks the mayor and tries to run, but the mayor shoots him. In the book, Todd goes through his entire journey to Haven, thinking that Ben is probably dead. And in the last town before Haven, Todd hears Ben singing a song that he's always sung to him, the same song his mother used to sing and wrote about in her journal. They are finally reunited, and this is when Ben finally tells him about the true history of Prentice Town. The mayor and his men are still on their tail, though, so Ben stays back to hold them off giving Todd and Viola more time to get to Haven and warn them about the mayor. Later, Davy tells Todd that he killed Ben. In the movie, Todd uses his noise to project his mom and the other women of Prentice Town to distract the mayor, giving Viola the opportunity to attack him, and he falls to his death. Todd wakes up on the spaceship with Viola after having his wound treated. The people of Viola's ship are making their settlement on the planet and presumably Todd and Viola live happily ever after. The book has one hell of an ending. I literally yelled out in frustration when I got to the end after having stayed up late for two nights tearing through the pages because it was such a compelling story and I had to know what happened to Todd and Viola. So in the end, after all this time on the run, several near-death experiences, each of them having saved the other one's life on more than one occasion, Todd and Viola are minutes away from Haven, the first and biggest settlement on the New World, where there is supposed to be a communications tower for Viola to warn her ship and enough people to take on the mayor and his army because he has an army now since he's been recruiting all of the men from all of these towns that they've passed and defeated. And what happens? Davy is back and he shoots Viola. Todd picks her up and carries her running into Haven. But when he gets there, the town is empty and he's calling for help. And then out comes the mayor who beat them there, and has already taken the town because Haven's lame-ass mayor just surrendered. And that's how it ends. Like, the freaking Empire Strikes Back. I was so mad, but I guess it was a good strategy because I immediately downloaded and started reading the second book. It should also be noted here that in the second book, Todd actually does use his noise to overpower the mayor and finally bring him down, but you really need to read the second book to find out what happens there. 
So ultimately, I wasn't crazy about the movie. It was okay, and if I hadn't read the book, I probably would have liked it a lot more. But I loved the book. It was so thrilling and action-packed with Todd and Viola on the run the entire time and always almost dying. It's one of those edge-of-your-seat, have-to-finish-as-quickly-as-possible reads that I don't come across very often. Also, the ending of the movie definitely cuts off the possibility of a sequel if they were going off the material of the second book, which is a little disappointing because the second book was also pretty good. I mean, you even feel sorry for Davy at the end of it, which I didn't think could be possible. But here's what I did like about the movie. Obviously, Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley are great, but Mads Mikkelsen as the mayor? Perfect. I mentioned earlier that the only dialogue from the mayor in the book is at the very end, but he's a predominant character in the second book, and there's only a little of that in the movie. Since there were several elements from the second book in the movie, I wish there would have been a little more focus on the mayor because he really is a truly terrifying character. And I wish they would have given Mads Mikkelsen more time with that character because I truly believe he could have done so much more with it. I really recommend reading this book. Just be sure to have the second book on hand because you're definitely going to want to start reading it right away. The second book also ends on a bit of a cliffhanger, but it's not as devastating as the first. And to be honest, I haven't finished reading the third book in the series, which also happens to be the last. Well, there you have it. That's my recap on Chaos Walking by Patrick Ness and the 2021 movie adaptation. I've included links to both the book and the movie in the description below so you can check them out for yourselves. If you enjoyed this review, please click like and be sure to click subscribe to see my next video. Thanks for watching.